by side. The ins a vehicle <coughs> will leave the station at the high end of a track on one side and travel down a utilization course powered by gravity only to rise up and meet the other end. Once on the other end, the track would be moved to the other the train would be moved to the other track and the operator would send the train on a return trip back to the first station. The ride was an was an unparalleled success. Charging only five cents a ride, Thompson made his entire investment back in about a week. From this design, roller coasters continued to evolve. First, the ends of the tracks were joined in a continuous loop with a hoist system to pull the train to the top of the track. The ride had to be kept slow to be kept to be safe, going about a dozen miles per hour. But one man, John Miller, changed all that in the early 1900s. His, his improvements included up stops, which were located below the car, preventing them from going off the track, and safety dogs, which make the clinking noise as the roller coaster is pulled up the track, preventing it from rolling backwards. The early 1900s became known as the golden era for roller coasters. Over 1,500 roller coasters were in operation around the globe at this time, according to rollercoasters.com. However, the Great Depression brought an end to this golden extravagance, since many people could afford it. The, however, up until 1959, the roller coasters were wooden, and Disney came out with the first steel roller coaster, the Madden Horn, in the first theme park, Disneyland. It was the first tubular steel roller coaster and, and included many of today's features. Loops, corkscrew track, and stability can be <coughs> traced back to this roller coaster. Today, roller coasters can be wooden or steel and looping or non-looping, depending on the type of material used. In general, wooden, wooden roller coasters are non-looping. Steel roller coasters are taller, faster, and steeper. However, wooden roller coasters have the thrill of swaying. So how does a roller coaster work? As the first drop approaches, many people are not thinking about their the car having no engine, they're thinking how their stomachs will be in their throat momentarily. The ride uses a conversion of potential and kinetic energy to make the car move. Actually, after the first drop, no more kinetic energy is needed. It's all dependent on the potential energy. And the, the roller coaster also has three sets of wheels. The running wheels guide the roller coaster on the track. Friction rolls control, move, control movement on either side of the track. And the last set of wheels keep the roller coaster on the track, which may be helpful. And finally, the roller coaster comes to a complete stop by compressed air brakes. So what's all the screaming about? Is the rider's life in danger? The amusement parks are one of the safest forms of recreation. You are more likely to be hurt when riding a bike, riding a horse, or even playing a sport, according to the National Consumer Safety Product. Death on these rides is preventable air. And safety rules apply on a roller coaster such as height, weight, medical condition of the rider and age. Once these rules are disregarded is when deaths occur. For example, in 1967, a 17-year-old boy was jumping from car to car and was crushed to death between the wheels of oncoming cars. Another occurrence, in 1976, a girl by the name of Carol Flores was ejected from the Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain due to her height and weight. She was 5'3 and weighed 253 pounds. However, the chance of death on a roller coaster is very slim. According to the um, National Consumer Safety Products Commission, the chance of death is, is approximately 1 in 250 million riders. So if you think this chance is high, you can always take that chicken exit. And remember, roller coasters are one of the great, the greatest forms of recreation. People flock to roller coasters all over the world, just uh, to amusement parks all over the world to ride roller coasters. They may be trying to find the highest roller coaster, which is the Desperado at Buffalo Bill in Jeans, Nevada, <coughs> or maybe they want speed. To find this, they could venture to Pennsylvania and ride the Still Phantom, which, is, which reaches the speed of 80 miles per hour. Whether it's the history, the way rides work, or the death-defying thrills that bring people to parks, it works. And remember, please remain seated until the ride comes to a complete stop and enjoy the rest of your day here at Forensics Performance Night. Thank you. March 20th, 1980, to November 10th, 1997. <coughs> 17 years old. Where are the real numbers? 124, 113, 103, 87? They should be there too. After all, those were your lives. I see with envy at your accomplishment. You finally reached it. You're finally lighter than air. This excerpt taken from the poem titled Lighter Than Air, was written by Christine Rio Donald, 
a poem she wrote dedicated to a friend who she lost in a battle to anorexia nervosa. Anorexia nervosa is an eating disorder in which one becomes obsessed with their weight and stops eating. This disease affects more than one million women today, not including the thousands of women who are never diagnosed. The people affected by anorexia are people like you and like me. They could be your boss, co-worker, sister, mother, or maybe even your own daughter. According to Jane Pratt, Ph.D., 99-5% of anorexics are women, ranging from the ages of 15 to 40 years old. With media-fed images of women who are considered to be beautiful, walking around with nothing but skin and bone, and The Gap, a popular clothing store, selling size zero clothing, it's not surprising that according to the 2000 edition of Encyclopedia Britannica, 5 to 10% of all young women in the United States have a distorted body image and preoccupation with becoming thin. Perhaps the biggest problem with anorexia is that it is often overlooked, even though it is so prominent in our society. Before anyone can help bring an end to this disorder, I must be first looked upon in the light that it should be. To help you to, to, help you to achieve this, I will discuss the popular causes of anorexia, the warning signs you should look for, and finally, what we can do along with treatments available for those affected by this eating disorder. Countless people this year will try to lose weight, some for health reasons, others to improve their appearance. However, anorexic women take the idea of losing weight beyond the extreme. In fact, according to Eric M. Sacker, author of Dying to be Thin, 15% of those affected by anorexia will die within a year. Because anorexia can result in death, <coughs> it may be hard to understand why or how anyone could do this to themselves. But understanding is the first step towards stopping this eating disorder. Western society repeatedly presents the idea that the chances for one to be considered successful or beautiful will greatly rise if you are thin. This concept can greatly come into play in an anorexic life, making it one of the top causes of, making it one of, the top causes of developing anorexia. Believing that a society-approved body image is the only beautiful body shape, it can be hard to accept yourself if you do not fall in that category. Fatty foods can quickly be considered bad, and your backward scale can quickly become your life. Once an anorexic has devoted their life to becoming thin, oftentimes they forget what is most important, themselves. Along with their health, anorexics can nearly destroy their self-confidence leading experts to believe that a low self-esteem is one of the top causes of developing anorexia. In a study conducted by Mark A. Zimmerman, Ph.D., <coughs> Karen Anderson, a recovering anorexic recalled, When I was 15, I remember everyone saying, You would be so pretty if you just lost some weight. You could even get a boyfriend if you just lost some weight. The pressures from people can sometimes seem overwhelming, causing many women to become anorexic because they feel that they are not good enough for anyone. Also, many women state that they became anorexic because they felt that they didn't have any control over their lives. Becoming anorexic gives them a false sense of accomplishment and control, when in reality, their dieting has become out of control. Now that we understand what can cause anorexia, we can begin to detect the warning signs of someone who is anorexic. One of the most obvious warning signs of someone who is anorexic is their extreme dieting. At the time, anorexics will take on strict diets, eating only foods in which they consider healthy. At meals, they may cut their food into tiny pieces, eat extremely slow, and dispose of extra food secretly. Along with their dieting, some anorexics will take on strenuous exercising activities, burning off any or more of the calories that their body receives. Besides their, besides their extreme exercising, some anorexics scheme up other ways to rid themselves of the bodily nutrients that they receive. According to the 2000 edition of Encyclopedia <coughs> Carta, 35% of those suffering from anorexia also suffer from bulimia nervosa. Bulimia nervosa is, is an eating disorder is when an individual engages in episodes of binging or consuming large amounts of food in short periods of time and then purging the food from their body by either self-induced vomiting or abuse of laxatives. Many anorexics even share certain personality traits, such as perfectionism, irritability, and withdrawal from family and friends. Many even develop mental illnesses, <coughs> more commonly, obsessive-compulsive disorder. According to Jane Pratt, Ph.D., 
30% of those suffering from anorexia also suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder, which is when an individual feels compelled to do something over and over again, often because of irrational thoughts or fears. This is related to anorexia because of the sufferer's obsession to become thin and daily rituals of eating and disposing of food. Now that we understand what can cause anorexia and have warning signs to look for, we can begin to help those who have this disease by seeking out different forms of treatment for them. If you know someone who is anorexic, the first and most important thing you can do for them is get them professional help. Once an anorexic has been submitted into the hands of professionals, there are many different forms of treatment they can receive. Psychotherapy is most commonly used to treat anorexia, but because of the drastic toll that anorexia can take on someone, stabilizing the patient's physical condition is the first step taken. This is primarily done through weight gain, although very difficult to achieve, especially if the patient refuses to eat. In this case, nutrients and fluid can, fluids can be administered to the body intravenously. Once a patient's physical condition is stabilized, means of psychotherapy can be used. Psychotherapy, through long hours of talking and counseling, can help change the anorexic view on themselves and eating. Group counseling is often used, but depending on the severity of the case, one-on-one -on -one counseling can be used before entering group counseling. Besides psychotherapy, some experts focus on the cultural factor anorexia has. Many have even developed prevention programs, which emphasize on identifying happiness, health, power, and virtue without being thin. These programs help the anorexic to identify the beauty that can be found in all body types and help them to develop a healthy self-esteem. Anorexia is usually very hard to treat because of the denial that most anorexics go through. But according to the 2000 edition of Encyclopedia Encarta, 42% of anorexics recover and 30% improve somewhat. Unfortunately, 20% suffer from a chronic eating disorder. Ray Stevens once sang, everything is beautiful in its own way. As simplistic as this may seem, for many, it can be awfully hard to believe, especially when stick figures of models and movie stars are constantly being shoved in our faces, giving the impression that being beautiful means being thin. Anorexia nervosa is something that can affect all of us, but by seeing it as a major problem in our society, and by knowing what can cause anorexia, the warning signs to look for, and what we can do, along with treatments available for those affected by this disease, we can help bring an end to this eating disorder. And, one by one, teach the world that real beauty comes from the love and support of family and friends, but mostly through the love we have for ourselves. <laughs> a parent's job is to love and protect their children. This isn't always easy especially when their child's worst enemy is herself. The Bad Seed by Maxwell Anderson. So you have the medal after all. Claude Daigle's medal. Where did you find this? How did the penmanship medal happen to be hidden under the lining of the drawer of your table, Rhoda? Now I want you to tell me the truth. Mommy, when we move into our new house, can we get a gazebo, please? They're so pretty and, and so shady, and I love sitting in them. Answer my question, Rhoda, and remember, I'm not as innocent about what went on at the picnic as you think. Miss Fern has told me a great deal, so don't bother making up any story for my benefit. How did Claude Daigle's medal get in your drawer? I don't know how it got there, Mother. How could I? You know. You know very well how it got there, Rhoda. Did you go on the wharf at any time during the picnic? At any time? Yes, I went there once. And was that before or after you were bothering Claude? I wasn't bothering Claude, Mother. What makes you think that? Well, why did you go on the wharf? It was really early when we first got there. Why did you go on the wharf, Rhoda? You knew it was forbidden. Well, one of the big boys said there were little oysters that grew on the pilings there. I just wanted to see if it was true. And one of the guards said he saw you coming off the wharf, and he said it was just a little before lunchtime. <coughs> I don't know why he said that. He's wrong, and I told Miss Bernie was wrong. He yelled at me to get off the wharf, and I did. And then I went back down to the yard, and that's where I saw Claude. But I wasn't bothering him. <coughs> what did you say to Claude? I said, since I didn't win the medal, uh, I was glad he did. Please, Broda, I know you're an adroit liar, but I must have the truth. But it is true, Mother. 
every word, one of the monitors said she saw you try to snatch the metal off Claude's shirt. Is that all true? Every word? That was that big girl, Mary Beth Musgrove. She's a lot of she saw me. Even me. 